And as much as me as a believer in Christ want to disagree with Dr. Umar on this statement, he has a point, but to an extent. about how much Bible chapter and verse you know. It's about how much Bible you willing to obey. Boy, Dr. Umar was just on the Joe Button podcast and he was talking about his issues with the black church once again. And his issues was in three areas, schooling, agriculture, and economics. And to an extent, Umar is right. But on the other hand, he's wrong. And it, I think he's just talking on issues that he don't fully understand. Now, I'm going to play the clip. But before I play the clip, I want I, I did a video on this topic a few months ago where Umar was saying something along the same thing. But I'm going to play this clip and I'm going to see y'all on the other side and I'm going to give y'all a really great analogy, a really thing, a really great way to think, just to challenge your mind and challenge Umar on this whole topic of, you know, uh, the black church and the, the 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 help or the lack thereof. He say that the black church church doesn't give to the black community. I see y'all on the other side of the clip. Yeah, they don't care about black folks. Yeah, they ain't about to come in for Mega church don't care about black folks. That's what you say. My problem with black religion is threefold. You take three things from black people that we can't afford to waste money. and can't never get back. Number one is money. You take too much resources. Time. Every black church should have three institutions. <laughs> you should have a school for our kids, a bank to invest in our people, and you should have a, a community garden to feed our people good food. food. Every church should have those three. Oh. If you are bringing in at least $250,000 a year in tithes and you ain't got a school, a bank, and a garden, you a goddamn fraud. I don't care who you are. Mm. Now, I agree with Umar to a certain extent. Like I said, but those who agree with Umar 100% allow me to challenge your thinking with this statement. The church of God in Christ is not the problem. Wicked men who have um, ulterior motives in the church is the problem. If you can't understand that, then you're the problem. Listen. We, when, when people are given too much power and control, you know, they become corrupt and abuse their position for personal gain or capital gain or whatever gain they trying to accomplish. And this don't only happen in churches. This actually happen in every institution, everywhere. It happens everywhere. It not only in a church, it happens in business. It happens in government. This happens in households. This happens everywhere. Everywhere a man, a man can take power, a man can gain control. One man, you know, uh, he's gonna he's gonna you know do his own thing for gain if he's not an honorable man. Kanye West said it the best. No one man should have all this power. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of pastors and a lot of these churches, they want all the power to themselves. So, you know, they end up becoming corrupt. But here's the thing. There's an old saying that goes, power tends to corrupt and absolute uh, power corrupts absolutely. Y'all know that saying. Now, let me give y'all an illustration from the Bible, how things can go from holy to wicked real quick. Samuel, right, was a prophet of God. He was called from a very young age, a young boy to be exact. You know, a little Tyler he was called. He heard the voice of God. Samuel held it down until he got too old to hold it down. So he appointed his sons, assuming that they were governing the way he governed and be submitted to God, be submitted to the voice of God like he was submitted to the voice of God. But guess what? Little did Sam, you know, his sons was all out wicked. Now, like any parent, we will, of course, you, me, or any parent, we will think that our kids were following our footsteps because they was under our roof, they was under our guide, they was under our leadership, that they would, you know, they, they, would, they would do the right thing in a position. But unfortunately for Samuel, his sons didn't. Now, let's go to a portion of scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. When Samuel became old, he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn, his first son was Joel, and the name of his second son was Abijah. 
they were judges in Beersheba. Yet his sons did not walk in his ways, but turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Now, Umar, hear me out if you ever get to hear this podcast. You're building a school, right? Let's say your school started off righteous and doing the right thing because you were the leader. You was appointed to that, you know, and then you, you know, started to create disciples. You put people in place to run your school when you start getting old because you thought that their motives was going to be your motives. You thought that they was going to follow the same script of righteousness that you fo- that you follow. You thought you thought in your mind that they was going to stick to what the initial school was about. You thought that. Although you trained them to do the things that you would do in your absence, you know, their motives was different. You, 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 y'all see it, right? They started to take bribes. They started to pervert just justice. They started to do all this crazy stuff in your school. You know that that wasn't how you intended it to be. Is that a shot at your character or is that a shot at their character? You're right. That is a shot at their character. I mean, character. Now, Umar and, and folk who think like Umar, right? Is those folk motives a reflection, you know, of the principles of the school? Is those folk who, who you know, who, who, uh, who went into the school and started taking bribes and start doing, start going a whole nother way? Is that a reflection of the principles of um, of Dr. Umar School? Now, most of y'all, if y'all honest with yourself, you would say no, and Umar, you would say no too. So it is the same thing with the Church of Tru- the, the Church of God in Christ. The same thing. There were some great leaders you know, who was called by God into the ministry and, you know, they was doing their thing. They got old. And unfortunately, when they passed on or got too old to run the ministry, they put people in place. They put people in the ministry, you know, who, who God didn't call. They was called by their father or the person who went before them thinking that they was going to do the right thing. God didn't call them that man of God who God called, called them. Y- y'all see, y'all see where I'm going, right? So what happens, uh, and, and you know, essentially what happens that those people who wasn't called by God, he was called by the, the man of God who was there before him. Um, those people brought in all type of wickedness. Unfortunately, they started to bring in all type of nonsense in the church. They started to usher in new this and new that and reformation this and reformation that. You know, they started to do all that stuff. It wasn't God appointed. Again, it was man appointed. That's why it's very important to take on the mind of Christ. His mind, his will, his devotion, obedience to God and loving our neighbor. That's why it's important to take on the mind of Christ. See, here's the thing. Christ had the power to do just about anything. I don't say just about. Christ had to do had the power to do anything he wanted to do. In fact, here's the crazy thing, right? In fact, it was it's a portion of scripture where they try to make Christ king, but he kept it pushing. Because here's the thing, right? Real leaders don't have to enforce their leadership on nobody. They lead by example. You see what I'm you see what I'm saying? They lead by example. Christ took the position of a servant leader. It was once said that a great leader is a better servant. Umar, Christ gave us the template to do all three of those things that you mentioned: schooling, agriculture, and economics. Christ gave us the template to do it. Now, unfortunately, People, you know, messed it. They, they, they do. Uh, uh, how can I say? They, they, they covered it up. But we have the scriptures, so we can uncover it. You see what I'm saying? A lot of these wicked leaders covered it up for their own selfish gain. But you have the scriptures. We have the scriptures, right? Here's the thing. Christ, He allowed us to have access to His Holy Spirit. 
which is referred to the spirit of truth. John chapter 16, verse 13. And there are many other scriptures that support what I'm saying. I'm just not going to go through them all. Y'all can go through them, you know, for yourself. So God gave us the ability to have understanding. God gave us the ability, ability to get the proper schooling, the proper knowledge. You know, now as far as agriculture, Luke chapter third, I mean chapter three, verse eleven, and there are many other scriptures once once again that support, you know, got Christ um, um, promoting agriculture, showing us how agriculture works. I'm just pointing out this one because again, there is many others that you can you know go do a search on for yourself. And lastly, economics. God gave us the template, you know, for economics. Christ showed us the way to economics and sowing and reaping and all and all the, the beautiful scriptures that goes along with economics. Y'all can go get all the scriptures on economics all you want. I, I'm not going to go down the list because there are there is a lot when you get into those scriptures. God gave us a template. But a lot of y'all are too woke to really sit down and submit yourself to the scriptures. You know, that, that's at the end of the day, y'all go read all these other books. Y'all go study all these other people cultures, but y'all refuse to y'all refuse to get into those those scriptures, our the Bible, because of your because of your the way, you know, non-black culture have colonized a lot of the scriptures. Now, I agree they did. They did. We're not gonna. We're not gonna ignore that. But you, me, and everybody else, we have the ability to get into those scriptures now, man. I thank y'all for rocking out with me. This is the boy. This is y'all boy Reese Johnson. This is the Gut and Saint Podcast, man. I thank y'all for tuning in on another broad on another broadcast, man. Do something for the, do something for the podcast today. Go to gasmerch.com and check out our latest hoodies. Check out our latest sweatshirts. Check out our latest t-shirts hats and so forth we got a dope we got a dope collection gasmerch.com we got the saint legacy design that's that's going crazy on tiktok right now we got the saint depot design that's going crazy on tiktok as well we got the hats we got we got we got a whole collection of stuff that i believe that y'all like man go to gasmerch.com and check it out and i catch y'all on the next one peace it's not about how much Bible chapter and verse you know. It's about how much Bible you willing to obey. obey.